The Belt and Road Initiative is about more than roads and railroads. It's about people's livelihoods and hopes for the future. For dynamic and rich economies, or for sound and profitable projects or businesses, a Chinese funding offer might not be so attractive. When the situation is not like that, and when all other options have been depleted, Chinese money may instead come as a savior. I was in Belgrade and decided to visit the Smedervo steel factory, which was bought in 2016 by the Chinese state-owned company He Steel. The acquisition is the centerpiece in China's Belt and Road engagement in the country, and Serbian President Aleksandr Vucic has called the relations with China a steel friendship. To get to Smederevo from Belgrade, I had to take a bus from the central bus station. Smederevo is about 40 kilometers east of Belgrade, situated at the banks of the Donob River. I went to the bus station and bought the ticket. However, the bus I was taking was late and I had to wait for about an hour at the bus station before it arrived. The steel industry has been central to Smederevo's economy since 1913, when Serbian and foreign investors opened factories for different kinds of steelwork along the Donab River outside the city. In 1918, the Kingdom of Serbia became part of the new country Yugoslavia, which after Second World War became the Socialist Federal Republic of Yugoslavia, led by Josip Tito. As steel production was important for building the new country, the Smedervo steel mill was upgraded immediately after World War II to produce 100,000 tons of steel per year. In 1964 the construction of a new factory was started, this time in Radinac, around 5 kilometers from Smederevo, and it quickly became a core part of industry in Yugoslavia. The steel plant reached peak production in 1989, when it produced a million tons of steel and during its heyday it employed more than 5,000 people directly and 16,000 including local suppliers. After I arrived in Smederevo, I went to see the Donab River. You could see railroad tracks and equipment for loading cargo onto river-going boats. I don't know if this is old equipment or if it's currently in use. Here there seemed to be some activity going on at least. I didn't know at first how to get to Radinac, and time started to get short. I read about the train going, but the service didn't seem to be so frequent. I also thought about going by foot, but after a while I found out about the bus going from the bus station that would take only 20 minutes, so I decided to take it. I didn't really know what to expect when I arrived, but it turned out the whole factory area was fenced in. On Google Maps it had looked a bit like you could walk around the factory area, at least in parts of it. I went up to the gate but I didn't dare to film while I did it. The guards at the gate gave me the answer I expected. I couldn't enter the factory grounds.
I had still gone a long way, so I wouldn't turn around completely. I looked at the map on my phone, and there seemed to be a way around, so at least you could see parts of the factory from the outside. I crossed the railway track and started walking alongside the factory. In the beginning of the 1990s, communist Yugoslavia broke apart, and a series of wars and ethnic conflicts followed. For the Smederevo steel mill, the 1990s was a decade of decline and falling production. Sanctions against the Yugoslavian government led by Slobodan Milosevic hit hard against the plant, and towards the 2000s, production had halted and the plant was in poor condition. In 2002, US Steel acquired the Smederevo steel plant in bankruptcy, with a promise to invest in the plant. It is said that when they bought it, the workers used the halls of the factory to grow mushrooms. In 2005, Blast Furnace No. 1 was put into operation again, after being unused for 18 years. The same year, US Steel Serbia became the largest exporter in Serbia. In 2010, they accounted for more than 10% of exports. In 2012, following the financial crisis and the economic downturn, US Steel decided to get rid of the loss-making plant. Without any potential buyers, it sold the plant to the Serbian state for one US dollar. The Serbian state, however, had no plans for running the plant long term, but wanted to prevent the layoff of more than 5,000 employees. They tried to sell the plant through public tenders in the following years, but the plant proved hard to sell, and although there was interest from the American S-Mark Steel Group, the deal never materialized. Instead it took 4 years, and then it was a Chinese state-owned enterprise that came in as the savior. In 2016, Hebei Iron and Steel Group bought the plant for 46 million US dollars. Unfortunately I couldn't see so much of the factory from the outside, but you could get an idea of the size of the plant. This is the railway station of Radinac. It doesn't look like it's being used much today. At some point however, workers must have commuted to the factory by rail and entered through here. If China keeps on investing, perhaps the town will see another golden era. Let's walk through this creepy tunnel. It seems to be leading to the factory.
The plant outside Smederevo is not just important for the Serbian economy. It also has a symbolic value. Steel is the essential ingredient in anything from weapons to cars to bridges and railroads and is therefore fundamental to industrialized and industrializing countries. During communism, the plant was not just a factory, but it was also a symbol of the nation's strength. Later, when it became derelict, it was a symbol of downfall and degradation. Across Serbia and the world for that matter, there are many places like Smederevo, factory towns where the only income has been lost. When China came in and saved the factory, it was there for a big propaganda victory and portrayed as the beginning of rejuvenation, not just of the plant, but of all of Serbia. Istil's acquisition of the factory in Smederevo has not just been met with praise. Critics say that pollution has increased since the factory reopened and that the air is now filled with red dust and heavy metals. Recently there has been protests in Serbia about the impact of new mining projects. The companies on the other hand say that the facilities they are taking over have old technology and that it will take some time to renovate them and make them greener. I wonder if this corn growing outside the factory is healthy to eat. Now it was really getting dark and I had reached the end of the road. Not that there was anything really threatening, but I felt it was time to go back to Smederevo, where I could find a place to stay. I walked back to the bus. Later I found a hotel and went into Smederevo's nightlife. 